Okay, I'm back. And so is, well, a few people are back too. Okay, good. Uh, last but not least, okay, so for the advanced or the last weekend of this particular series, we have two assignments that are due, number five and number six. But uh, because everything is due on 422, and let me take a look at my calendar real quick. <coughs> 422 is going to come up awfully quickly, as well as the end of next month. We're meeting on 413 and 414, but some people like to work ahead. So if you're going to participate, oh, excuse me, yeah. I'm sorry, 420 and 421. So all of the assignments are due on 422, which means some of you are probably going to want to work ahead before we get to that next meeting, So, which I figured was going to be the case. However, you're in luck. The assignments are extremely easy. Number six is a multiple choice prep. So number six, if you take a look at it, it's not all multiple choice, but I'm going to start with number six because it's a little bit easier. It is not an, a programming assignment. So you only have to do this if uh, you want to, to get credit. <laughs> so you have to turn this in. Well, all right, do we really need to do this? Okay, well, okay, yeah, you should do this. It used to be the old midterm. I've used this as a midterm a long, long, long time ago. This is number six. It's a nice little review for the final exam. So it's a little bit of a, what you're going to take if you show up on the 20th, the 21st weekend, um, which is going to give you credit for the entire course. So what you need then is to kind of see, well, what's going on here. You're going to answer the following question using words, no source code examples. And what you're going to answer with is, you know, what are the four main characteristics of object-oriented programming? I gave a little acronym here called a PI, which I went over in the first uh, weekend, uh, which was A for abstraction, B for poly polymorphism, I for inheritance, E for encapsulation. And then what's an instance method? What's a class method? B these are the basic concepts. If you can answer all this stuff really easily, you can ace that final exam. It, it's really easy. Um, answer the following questions with Java source code. Uh, show the source code that, on how to inherit one class from another. Create an abstract class. Create an interface. Um, create a subclass and overload a constructor and a, of the superclass. And then some miscellaneous questions here. What's the output of the following? Explain why. So you can cut and paste this code, compile it, and actually see what the out co output is if you want to. And you can assume that the weather class here is stored in a file called weather.java. And then you have problem2 class is stored in a file called problem2.java. Um, the code compiles and runs, so you can actually cut and paste it, compile it, run it. And you have some questions on the bottom, some A, B, C, and D. Um, what is the output that's produced by executing the following code segment? And this would be in a main program. So these are one class that's inherited by another class out here. No, one class, what are we doing here? Uh, no, 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 no. Looks like the two classes are working together. Uh, weather. Okay, so it's it's one. They're working. Um, follow through on the implementation, and then answer a question. You know, what output would be produced by executing the following code statement here? So you're just answering those questions, and then the four, third one, the last question here, is. Um, usually throw some people off because they're like, we didn't talk about UML in the class and class diagrams. <clears throat> Not too much, actually. A little bit in the first meeting, but identify the classes of the following description. So if you were given this description and you were going to create this program from the description, follow through the description, list at least one responsibility for each one of the classes. What this means by is the methods. What, are the, what behaviors, what data. So Describe the classes that you would create. You don't have to write the source code. So if this was going to be a refrigerator that has a motor, a temperature sensor, a light, and a door, if it's easier for you to sketch out the source code, then do it that way. Otherwise, you can simply write a description that says a refrigerator class. Refrigerator is going to have a data member called a motor, <laughs> a temperature sensor maybe, a light, a door, and the motor is going to turn on and off primarily as uh, prescribed by the temperature sensor. So that looks like a method, maybe. It's going to be, you know, turn on and off motor, and it's going to communicate with the sensor. So you might have a method for the sensor to set the sensor, detect from the sensor, make it all up. 
what you're kind of trying to do is describe if you were given this problem description, create some C, some excuse me some Java not C plus plus but create some Java classes that uh, would fit into this model. A couple of different ways of answering this question. So, this is the sixth. Um, I would call it a programming assignment. It's the sixth exercise. The fifth one is actually kind of cool. Um, as assignments go, A2 wants you to write some classes for a personal record system. We actually wrote some of it this weekend. Make it simple. Consider four classes. We have person, employee, instructor, and student. There's a little bit of a twist, though, to this. <laughs> so keep the code that we already started out with, because you can reuse that. The following figure illustrates the relationship. You don't see the figure in here, but uh, what we've got is a person on the top, and then the person on the top. If you load this up in Word, you'll actually see the diagram. This is in preview, so it's not showing. But person, employee, instructor, and student. So a student isn't an employee, but it's a person. So a person, and we have student. Instructor is an employee, but we might have different types of employees outside of. So we can have person, and then we have person on the top, and then we have employee and student kind of at the same level. And then below employee, we have um, instructor. So you can kind of see the hierarchy, hopefully. A person class is a parent class of the employee class. A person class is, is the parent class of the employee class and the student class. And the employee class is the parent class of the instructor class. So the following are the tasks that you need to complete for each one of the classes. Create appropriate fields for each one of the classes. Necessary fields are listed uh, below. And um, add your own fields if needed different fields, just like the dinosaurs, but it's going to compare all of these objects. So it's using comparable, and is it an instance of, so you're going to take one object and you're going to compare it to the other one. We actually wrote this code yesterday. It's in the comparable. <laughs> so you have it. Um, so necessary fields are listed below. Uh, use your own way to make sure that the constraints are satisfied. So person has an ID, which is uh, an integer starting from 1. So that might actually be a static data member for the ID. So you could create a static ID for the person. Employee is going to have a salary. That's going to be a double value. Actually, we did that. Um, should not be negative. So when we set the salary, we make sure it's a positive number. The student, for simplicity, assumes that the student has at least one teacher. So students are going to keep track of which teacher they were assigned to. Teachers are going to keep track of which students they have. So there's also a video that goes over the build of this. <laughs> and I practically build it for you. If you go out to the bhecker.com website and go into... We're going over assignment 5 for you guys because you just came in. Um, assignment number 5, how-to video. This video here goes through. I'm gonna stop it because it's gonna. Whoops, this is number four. Uh, hold on a second. Number five, how to video. It's gonna show. There we go. There's the picture I was talking about. <laughs> so it's gonna go through an explanation of it, but it also actually goes through one hour and 11 minutes of actually building the sucker. So if I move ahead here. Description. I don't spend an hour on here. It's some useful code that it's going to go into. If you watch through this whole thing, 90% of it will be built for you. But you have to listen to me talk about it for like 45 minutes to an hour. <laughs> well, it's an hour and 11 minutes, unfortunately. So, But you can kind of see the whole program is being built in here. I'm not going to give you the source code on purpose because I don't want you to just take the source code and turn it in. You actually, If you can't figure it out, you can use this and it's going to give you a technique for doing it. Um, what the purpose of this um, one is, is to look at the concept of using an array. So you're given the main program. And what you're doing is you're going to make an array. So we've got student, instructor, instructor, janitor, who's also an employee, named Bob. You're going to keep an array of students that belong to a teacher inside of the student. So we have... Uh, IDs are kept for students, and then instructors have an array. So student ID array is an integer array, an integer array keeping track of the IDs of the instructors that the 
excuse me, of um, IDs of instructors. So you set the size to 10. You can, because we're working with arrays, if you don't want to work with the collections array, you want to just use a regular old array, you can set, you know, and make each teacher can only have 10 students, and each student can only have 10 teachers. So you're assigning teachers to students and students to teachers by keeping track of their IDs. And if you put them all in an array, then you can keep track of all the people, and then you can go, well, this is a student, this is a teacher. So you can, in the video, we'll show you how to do that, actually. Go through a for loop for this item. What is it? Figure out, is it an instance of teacher? Then do this, if it's an instance of a student. Because you can take all these people, stick them all in an array, go through the items in the array, figure out, are they teachers or are they students? Because at one point, you're going to have to assign students to teachers and teachers to students, which is the interesting part of the assignment. So it's actually quite interesting <laughs> when you get into the coding part of it. Um, you can challenge it on your own, see how far you can get through it, and then uh, if you read through here, we've got other um, helpful hints and suggestions. All of the above fields are private and only accessible through the access methods. Um, a two-string method for each one of the class to print out the information about the current object. We actually sort of saw that with a print method. So. Uh, a static method uh, to find the students. You know, a person should uh, be declared as an abstract class. We're building it. We have half of this template actually written for us because I used the same theme uh, yesterday. So that's the fifth one. So, any questions on the fifth one? Oh, I thought I heard something. No? Okay, good. Oh, yes. Really? Uh, where did you download it from? Let's see. Let me just check out real quick, make sure I've got the link set correctly. Uh, oh, assignments. This one here? Yeah. Save. Uh oh, I hope, it's, I hope it's the same one. If not, I can upload this one. JP assignment 5. No, it's the same one. Uh, oh, oh, open with preview. I'm opening it with preview, so there's a there's a thing in here. It looks different than Microsoft Word or TechSoup. Does it? Is it on the same theme? It's five pages. You have five pages on yours. Mm -hmm. It could be that it's. Um, what's on the rest of it? Uh, hold on a second. Uh, let me s stop this.